Today we're going to be taking apart the hybrid system on the Ford Fusion to see what's inside and how it works. And at the heart of the story here we have the power inverter. Essentially it's going to take 280 something volts here, DC from the power pack at the back, and control the transmissions to electric motors here by converting them to AC three-phase current. And this is also known to Ford as a transmission control module. There's also coolant lines that hook up inside of here. That's because the electronics get nice and warm. And it's actually got its own coolant circuit. We've also got hookups over here that go to the control modules inside of the car. Start here by popping off this top lid, which uses a T25 Torx. All right, taking a look under that cover, you can see we've got our control board that interfaces with the rest of the vehicle through its CAN communication systems. We've got an information bus that hooks up to this daughter board, a couple of capacitors, a big microcontroller over here, and a lot of hookups that go all the way around the board. So I'm going to go ahead and remove those next. And now I'm going to be removing all the Phillips screws. And I can lift this board off here. It's like a motherboard. All right, underneath here we do have a piece of paper. This is some anti-static kind of paper, I'm assuming. And then there's a couple more screws. You can pull this plate off here. And underneath this piece, we have another smaller circuit board. And now this piece should fall off. There we go. There's the breakout board. I'm just going to pull off this expansion tank over here. Taking a look under the hood here, you can see we have DC voltage, which is going to come in from underneath this block here to these two terminals. This black piece here is a smaller smoothing capacitor of the two. There's a larger one down at the bottom. You've got power that's going to come in through here. It's first going to come in through the reactor, which is this giant coil. Now this giant coil is going to amp up that voltage to a much higher voltage so that you can run those AC motors a lot faster when you need extra power and acceleration. Now you can see that circuit is then going to complete itself by going back over to this little control board and then back through this bus bar over here. Let's take out some of these components here. Did you know you can use a T25 on a hex? And let's remove some of the bus bars. We'll remove the reactor. All right, let's see how this comes out here. Here you can see you have a current sensor that always goes around that bus bar. So you can control how much of that is going to the reactor. And then next up we have this smoothing capacitor. You can see it's got its hookups right over here. All right, so this entire thing comes out. It is epoxied inside of its case. And on the bottom here, this thermal paste is what conducts heat down into the cooling system below because this coil is going to get very hot. This stuff is like anti-seize. It won't even come off your hand. I'm going to remove this little control board for the reactor. Yes, there we go. This has also got a giant heat sink on the bottom and it feels really hefty. I wonder what's underneath here. I think it's soldered on. Let's break it off. Well, if it comes off that easy, then their welding is pretty poor. Yeah, there's not much you can see inside of here. Now inside of the case where these two bus bars are, I'm going to remove this little cover. And then now we got access to two more Torx bolts. Now those two bus bars is what takes the DC from this half over here and carries it down into the capacitor down below in the second half. Taking a closer look at the capacitor here, I don't see any capacitor values, but it is made by Panasonic and it's got two output. Here's what the coil looks like. Now how this reactor works is essentially you use the capacitor to charge this up here. It creates a nice big magnetic field. Then when you cut power to it, that magnetic field collapses and that gives you an inrush of current and that's what gives you that boost voltage. Now you can keep doing that by charging and discharging the capacitor and the inductor. I'm going to take out the junction block that goes to the AC and comes from the battery. Now the junction block is pretty interesting. We have DC current coming from the battery going into the inverter and this is going to be DC current going to the AC compressor and that's because the inverter for the AC compressor is on the actual compressor itself and that's because the AC compressor has got its own inverter built in by itself. If you want me to make a video on this make sure you leave a comment down below and I'll have a future teardown on this AC compressor. You see those two pins inside of there that leads to this that's actually a lockout switch so if you don't have anything connected here it won't have live current here in case something shorts this out. Now the rest of this inverter has got to be taken apart from the bottom so let's spin that around for these really crusty ones I got my grandfather's toothbrush here and I'm gonna just scrape that down so it's clean pretty sure this one's gonna strip Yay. Yay. there's a little vent plug over here interestingly this is made in Japan which is a good thing for Ford oh I forgot to disconnect the capacitor how about that you gotta open up this guy all right, inside of here we have the connections that go to the capacitor, which is attached here. 
Okay, now we should be able to take off this top here. And you can see these here are the connections that go to this giant capacitor. I'm gonna remove these bolts here. I'm gonna remove the smoothing capacitor here. You can see here it's 1100 microfarad at 600 volts DC. Um, did I crack it here? Oh shoot, I think I cracked it. Oh shoot, I did crack it, look at that. Now this smoothing capacitor is responsible for turning that alternating current that has been rectified after the diodes and smoothing it out so it becomes direct current so it can charge the 270 volt battery pack in the back. Taking a look under the cover, you can see we've got the main board and there's also a second layer that's gonna be doing the controlling of the electric motors. Essentially, we've got direct current coming in through those two over there from the top half and that's gonna come in down to these bottom bus bars over here that's gonna be fed into this control circuit into the IGBTs or insulated gate bipolar transistors which are going to change that direct current into alternating current and then send it out through these three phases over here. Let's take off this board so we can have a closer look. All right, now there's a bunch of these little bus wires here that I'm going to take my time and remove. I'm going to remove this first board over here and then there's this anti-static film. And it looks like we got another bracket here to remove with a bunch of Phillips. I'll remove this bracket here. It's got another film on it. And then we reach these control circuitries. Taking a look inside of here, you can see the three distinct modules. That's for the three phases, U, V, and W. Essentially, the waves that are formed from these IGBT modules are 120 degrees apart. That helps to increase motor torque. And on this side here is where the DC comes in to feed all of that. Now I'm going to be removing all of the hex bolts here so we can get these bus bars off. There's actually positive and negative separated by a piece of paper. And here's the bus bar. It looks like we have the current sensors. They essentially go around here and they can sense how much current is going in there. So you have a closed loop control circuit, just like how your mom can tell if you did your homework or not, just by looking at your face. All right, I got this piece out, I'll pry this piece out. These are the junction boxes. So the inside connects here and then the outside where the cables are connects here. Now one thing is these connectors actually sit right sided up. So if there's any water or anything, it literally just drains into the connectors and corrodes these junction blocks. Now at the corner here we have this white resistor. Here we've got a 35.3k ohm resistor. Now this is responsible for discharging that big capacitor that sat right on top. So if you're stupid enough not to disconnect the current, you're not going to be shocked with as much voltage as you thought you would be. I'm going to remove all the hexes so we can get these IGBTs out. And you can see these have some of that thermal paste on it so that it can conduct its heat down into the inverter's cooling system. Now taking a look at these power transistors, you can't really see them even if I take off this board. So this is essentially the little control board that's going to control the transistors inside of there. The transistors are pretty much bolted down. I wonder if I can pry this off. I don't really want to grind it because I could get cancer or something, you know? It's like open a, you open a box and you get another black box. I wonder if I can open this anymore. Jeez, this thing's harder than my... Okay, now it starts to smell like burnt electronics. I think I'm going to stop right there. Essentially what we have inside of here is a transistor and that's a digital switch which is going to switch on and off to create that AC waveform. Now also inside of here are diodes. So what that does, it takes the alternating current from a positive negative wave and it just creates a positive positive wave and then the smoothing capacitor takes care of the rest to turn it into DC. Now if we take a look at how the system works here, essentially we've got the high voltage battery at the back of the vehicle that's going to bring power over to the boost circuit inside of the inverter that's going to power the inductor and the capacitor which are going to work together to boost this up to many hundreds of volts. Now that boosted power is then going to be sent over to these switching transistors which are going to digitally switch on and off in order to create the zigzag waveform to mimic an alternating current waveform. Now there's three of those units which are going to produce three phases called U, V and W and it's going to be in a 120 degrees phased apart. Now there's two motors, so you got two sets of these UV and W, and that's going to be fed down to the transmission, which has two electric motors in it, and that's eventually going to be driving the wheel. Now through regenerative braking, those motors are going to act like generators and bring in three phase current that needs to be rectified using the diodes, which are actually in the same module as the transistor. So she's going to take this plus minus waveform over here and just turn it into a plus plus waveform. That's then going to be sent over to that giant smoothing capacitor, 
which are going to fill in the areas on top of this waveform over here to become an acceptable ripple, which becomes direct current, which now you can charge the high voltage battery with. Now in these Ford hybrids, the converter assembly is actually part of the battery assembly at the back of the car. It's going to take the 270 volts and step it down to 14 volts DC so you can charge the 12 volt battery to run all of the other electronics in the car. As you can imagine, all of those electronics get super hot, so let's take a look at the cooling system next. Whoa, that's cool. Looking at the cooling system, we've got our inlet and our outlet, and then this one here went to the expansion tank. Essentially, fluid is gonna come in through here, and it's gonna be forced to pass between these fins over here, and that's to maximize the surface area of heat transfer from the electronics to the aluminum, and then from the aluminum to the radiator fluid. Then from the radiator fluid, back out to a radiator, and then into the air. It really looks like a 3D maze for the coolant. And that's a look at the power electronics inside of the 2014 Ford Fusion Hybrid System. Essentially, 270 volts DC is going to come in from the battery pack. The electronics here are going to control these IGBTs to take that DC and turn it into AC current to control the transmission. Now, when the transmission is regeneratively braking, we've got diodes inside of here that are going to work along with the smoothing capacitor to send current back to the battery to get it charged. Of course, we've got to mention the reactor capacitor and its little IGBT that's going to switch on and off in order to boost up that voltage so we can get more power out of those electric motors. And not to mention the rest of the communication module that's going to feed back to the vehicle. And then of course we've got the coolant circuit which is going to keep the temper of these electronics under control. Now, I don't know if you noticed but this one's actually missing the DC to DC converter and that's because it's located on the battery pack unlike the Toyota system which puts it inside of the inverter. Now if you want to see the engine or transmission teardown from this vehicle make sure you stay tuned for those videos and subscribe if you want to see more videos just like this one. Now I've got thermal paste all over my glove.